Hey kids, welcome to the Stylish Mental Particles and Effects in Harmony Guide thing. Today we're going to be doing some more particle stuff. I might do one or one more video on bits and bytes, just stuff like the vortex and orbit, kind of the weirdo ones, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get that out. But the last one I really want you guys to have is I'm going to talk about how the sprites work. So if we go into our sprite emitter rendering tab, right now I'm using these little dots here. And in a first video, I talked about using particle type. So here, if I switch it to that, I'm going to have these little stars, make them a little smaller. But now I have these cute little stars coming out of the thing. So I'm going to go through each one of these types. I'm going to start I'm going to leave the index selector stuff to last. So I'm going to skip over those ones and then come back to those ones because those ones are a little bit more complicated. So the first one is render as dot. And this is perfect if you just need something that renders quickly with your scene. You still want to see kind of where your particles are going and what they're doing. But doing a play blast of dots is going to be a lot quicker than using your sprites. If you are doing something with sprites, it's pretty easy to set those guys up. You just want to throw your drawings and you could do all sorts of stuff in here. I have a white star and a white background, which is super clear. And then I have a moon and a sort of a square and an ugly triangle, low budget, lucky charms shapes. I'm going to, I'm just going to calm these down a little bit, make my eyes hurt. I don't want to give anyone a seizure. All right. So I've got these low budget, lucky charm shapes, and I just have those plugged into the left side of my sprite emitter. This is asking for an image. Um, drawing a composite in here like this will not allow the sprites to work. So you can't use something like a rig plugged into a sprite emitter. If you wanted to have a rigged item and then use that as a sprite, you could render it out as an image sequence and then use that. But usually what you do is just draw whatever sprites you want on a regular drawing node, and then you could put those along there. Anything that gets super complex, you're going to have to look at rendering that out beforehand. So instead of render as dot, I'll just start at the top here. Use frame number. Boop. So what this means is it's going to use the frame number and reference that as to what image it's going to throw out. So in this case, it's just going to cycle through all the little shapes I have, and then it's going to do nothing because that's all the frames I have. What I could do is copy and then control B to paste special. And then I could throw a cycle in using these options. We have a cycle paste option here normal forward, reverse. So if you need everything to go the opposite way, then you have forward to reverse or reverse to forward. And then you could paste it in as many times as you want it cycled. Hit OK. And it's going to cycle it along here without you having to paste, paste, paste. Or in your sprite emitter, still in your rendering tab, just below you have the option of cycles in here. So if you want this to cycle indefinitely, this is a good option. You can switch it to normal cycle. And you need to know the number of drawings, which in this case is five. And now it's going to cycle through those five drawings. If you put this to something higher than five, then it will use the blank frames. It's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So don't expect it to do anything intelligent, like know how many drawings you have. Whee! This is not ideal for just a collection of shapes like this. But if you were doing something like an explosion and you've drawn dust poofs uh, poofing out or different fire effects, things like that, and you want them cycled, then that's going to work. Or the lemmings example uses a cycle, the bees. Cycling back and forth is just going to go to the end of the cycle and then go back. If you have something swinging back and forth, something like that, that might be useful to you. So use particle type. I'm going to skip over the index thing and do that at the end. Use particle type. This is the one we've used before. And right now it's only giving us stars. So if we wanted to use all of the different shapes that we've created, we have to go over to our generation tab and then come down here to the type. Okay, so the type generation strategy, I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm just going to pop down here. Particle type zero, this means what's the first drawing in your group. So if you have these from one to five, you put one here, it's the first one, particle type one, that's the last one. So this is going to be one to five. You could put one to three if you only want those ones, or you could put three to five if you only want those ones, or if you have your drawings over here, that's totally fine. They just have to be contained within a little area. And already you can see that this is just going to barf out all of the different shapes, and they're just going to, so each particle is assigned a shape. So it's given a particle type, 
which is these guys. And then it just remains that shape. So this is great for like a confetti thing where you want lots of different colors. That's what their confetti example uses is this type of solution. Um, this is also good if you're doing something sparkly and you don't want all your sparkles to look exactly the same. Or if you want a few different raindrops just to give it a little bit more character, then there's lots of different things you can do with the particle type. Sequentially assign number. Each beat, it's going to start assigning things from 1 to 5. So if I turn my sprite emitter down very low, here it's 10 100% of the time. I'm going to change it to 1 10% of the time. So we're only getting stars because each beat, it's saying, do I generate one? Occasionally it'll say yes, 10% of the time, boop, boop. And it never gets beyond one in our number type because it's based on beats. If you want to have a smaller number of ones, it might be better to go with randomly assigned number type. So now it's only gonna puke them out intermittently, but it's going to randomly select from the different drawings and you'll get a little bit more variety. So sequentially, if this is higher, so this is three and then 75% of the time, then you can see we're starting to get a little bit more variety, but it's most often giving us ones, occasionally giving us twos, and then giving us threes because it's determining how many particles it's getting. Sometimes it's getting one, sometimes it's getting two, sometimes it's getting three. And because it's being assigned sequentially, that's the number it gets puked out. If we get three, we get a square. If we only get two, we get a moon and a star. And if we only get one, we get a star. So if you want to play around with that and have some more of some and less of the other, then you'd go sequentially. Randomly as if you just, you don't care which one happens to come out. You just want a little bit of variety. Next, we're going to use age. Do, 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 do. Similar to use frame number, it's going to go along this line. I can set my exposure higher so these last a little bit longer. So I'm going to go to my exposure. Uh, I'll set exposure manually and set it to five. Boop. So now they're living a little longer and you can see what's happening. When these guys are born, they are all a star. Then they turn into a moon, then a square, then a triangle, then a horseshoe. So no matter when they're born, they're going to go through the sequence. If you use frame number, all of them are going to age at the same pace. So you can see even the baby ones are coming out as the new shape. Whereas use age, when the thing is born, it's starting on frame one. And then it's going to cycle through all of the different ones until it reaches the end of its lifespan. This is more what you would use if you had an animation you wanted it to... Uh, play out from the time it's born till the time it dies. So cycling probably wouldn't make much sense there, but who knows, you might have something. So let's go to these index selector ones. Use frame number as index selector. So the frame number, as we remember, just goes through. All of them are going to age at the same rate, even the baby ones. The frame number as the index in selector, this gives us the option of using the selector guy here. So this one's a little bit of a weirdo. If we come down to our sprite emitter and we open it up, you can see your selector is here. Second last one in the list. And you can put some keyframes on this. We're gonna open it up. So the uppy downy side of our graph is going to be selecting the type of sprite. So over here, just like we assigned a, a value range, this here is going to use those same numbers, one to five, because it's just using the frame numbers and we can assign them as we go along. So this axis does refer to time. So zero is zero frames, five is five frames, 10 is 10 frames. And we can set a value here. So that's now going to use drawing one. This is going to use drawing three. This one's going to use drawing five. This one's going to use drawing two. This one's going to use drawing four. And we can change this as to whatever we actually need it to be. We have to revert these guys back to ones exposure, spectacles are one. So now each drawing, as we go along in our time, once we hit our exposure here, it's going to change the type of drawing we have. So what this index does, this index selector, blah, 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 is instead of actually changing the exposure of your drawings on your timeline, you can just change the exposure here. So you're saying one is going to be exposed up until frame seven, and then whichever one you decide next is going to be exposed for five frames. And then what you could do instead is actually grab these guys and just drag them along like this. So I've just spaced out my drawings to the same place as these keyframes are. This is going to do exactly the same thing, one or the other, okay? This is just, if you don't wanna muck around with your sprites for some reason, you, you could do that. 
next is use particle type as index and selector. So this one's a little bit different. The way this one claims to work, and I don't like this one I find just frustrating. We open up our selector again. This side is still going to be our drawings from one to five, but then going across, this is meant to be a percentage of how many are being exposed. So before when we were using our sequential uh, assign type, we were getting mostly ones and then trickling down towards five if enough things were coming out at a time. This is supposed to let you adjust that manually. So now we're getting anything that's closer to one on your timeline is going to give you the most. So we're getting mostly stars, a little bit of moons, and then some squares. And if we move these guys closer, move those guys closer to the one, then we're going to get more of them. All right, so now we're getting a few little moons. If we were to cut the moon from the end and put the moon second, now we're going to get more moons and fewer of like, say we put stars at the end over here now, now we're getting fewer stars, pretty much none. So this is meant to let you tell the emitter which ones you want to see the most of, but I don't find it's very intuitive. It's very difficult to get uh, the exact ratio. Like now I'm seeing no stars at all. And I could there, if I put it from one to five, I can say now put fewer stars, but it's not any different than going to your generation tab, seeing that you want one is the most. So you can, if you want stars to be the least, you can put stars last in your list here. And now you're going to get fewer stars just by using particle type itself. We can set it to sequentially assign the number now because stars are fifth. We're not even generating five at a time. So here, if we generate five at a time, we might get the occasional star. There's one. So if we put this up to seven, we're more likely to see a star. Or if we put this up to 10, we're, we're probably gonna see quite a few stars. So rather than using this particle type as index and selector, my preferred method is just to make another sprite emitter. I could just copy and paste that sprite emitter. This is going to create a complete independent sprite emitter. It's not a clone. And then I could create an independent copy of these sprites and I could say, okay, I only want stars to come out of the second emitter and I want everything but stars to come out of the first emitter. Plug in our region. We can have two sprite emitters plugged into the same system. That's totally fine. And now if we open up our star sprite emitter, we could give it an exact number. So five every 40% will say, if that's too many, we can put this down to 20. And now we have exact control over each different one. I'll even put in five sprite emitters if I need to tell each particle what to do independently, just because there's so much more control than this selector one. It's just, it's so counterintuitive. It's less work I find to put in more sprite emitters and then just do it independently. So otherwise you're guessing and checking and I can get time to guess. All right, so next is use age as index and selector. So this is a similar thing. If we open up our daily again, this side is going to be selecting each of the particle types. So one through five, whatever way you've ordered them here in your timeline. Now it's four because I deleted the star. And this axis is going to be the age of the particle. So rather than frame one, this is when it's born and it'll just continue until it's death, asking this selector which one you want to do. So Again, rather than using age as index and selector, what you could do is just use the age and then change the exposure here on your timeline of your actual little dudes. So if you wanted it to hold on the first drawing for 10 frames or so, you could just manually set that up down here. So we have it use the age. It's going to start off everything using that one until they get older and then they'll change to the next ones in the list. All right, so the baby ones are moons. And then as they get older, they turn into horseshoes. So that's the gist of this. I never use the index and selector because it's less convenient than just changing the exposure on my drawings. I mean, I can't, I can't think of an, exa of an example where it would be more convenient to use this selector index than to change the exposure because the exposure is just, it's more intuitive. It's something that you're used to playing around with rather than going around and mucking in with a graph. I mean, the particle type is index and selector. That one I just find super annoying. I'd rather add a couple extra sprite emitters and have the ultra control over 
the the different sprite shapes then try and muck around with some sort of percentage of maybe this is going to look right but i have no idea i just find it annoying so most often i stick stick to particle type and then i adjust over here one to five if i want a collection of things so now i'm getting a nice variety or if i actually have a cycle that i want to use i'll use the age and then i'll just make sure that my sprites are exposed to whatever sort of length I need them to, to be exposed to. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to pop down here real quick and look at the coloring. Use drawing color. It's just going to use whatever drawings that you have there. But you, there are some options here that are kind of fun. Uh, you can map the RGB based on age. And in your sprite emitter, you actually have your RGB and your alpha. So red, blue, green, and alpha are all here to be animated independently. So you can just slam some keys down there. And then pop these open and let's change that to four, change that to 33, whatever. So now as things age, because we've selected age, they're going to get greener, turns out, because I just slammed down some things in there. There we go. That's super fun. You can map the RGB and alpha. So you can, you have to select the alpha if you actually want it to work as well. So now we can make it slam that down to zero. You. And this is keyable, so we can have them stay pretty much visible like this and then have them fade out. So this would help prevent things from popping off if you have a really chaotic system. Say you're doing like a big snowstorm and you have a kill switch on your snow because you don't want an exponentially large collection of snow happening, then you can have them die off and, and fade rather than just completely disappear. That's useful. You can just map the opacity and you can also do this by frame. So now rather than age, they're all going to go at the same time. This would be useful if you're thinking about like LED lights and computers, the way that they're constantly changing colors and stuff. If you had some sort of a sparkly LED tube, maybe it's like a, a cyberpunk background, who knows, then you could have everything change color as they go along at the same pace. And you can do the same thing with opacity and alpha. So that stuff's pretty straightforward. Uh, blur, I prefer to use an external blur. So rather than coming in here and mucking around with the blur in here, I'll actually just grab a, a blur, a blur radial or whatever from here and just plug it into my system. That'll totally work. So here I could throw the blur up here boop, and everything's getting blurry. Or if you just want it to look a little bit glowy, you could throw a blur in the back and a solid in the front. Cheap blurry glow. There you go. Cheap, cheap glow. Looks fabulous. All right, so that's it for the sprites. You should be able to figure all of these different things out now. And with the ones that I've covered so far, you should be able to do a vast amount of different things. And you could probably figure out the other ones that I haven't gone over yet. Don't be afraid of checking the help menu. If like, if you need an orbit of something then to go check the help menu if you if you need that before I ever get around to doing a video on it because that's not a super big priority for me those weirdy ones because this much stuff is going to get you most of the stuff you need all right so I have freelance coming up hopefully it's not going to mess around with my uploading schedule but I'm not making any promises because paid stuff comes first <laughs> so that my family doesn't starve. <laughs> but I'll try and get something up for you soon. And I am planning on doing stuff with character animation, but it is really time consuming to, to do character animation. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna format those videos. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll try and leave a useful answer or make a video if it's something that can't be covered in one, in one paragraph. <laughs> so like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you in the next video. A mystery video. <laughs>